A code of conduct for ministers has been in place since 1954 and was last updated in 2005. Ministers and other political office holders are notified of this code, of con of this code at the start of each term of office and whenever a new political office holder is appointed. The Prime Minister also issues rules of prudence after every election to all members of Parliament of the People's Action Party. These rules are released to the media, with the latest version released in August 2020. The Code clearly states that a minister must not direct or request a civil servant to do anything or perform any function that may conflict with the civil service's core values of incorruptibility, impartiality, integrity and honesty. Ministers are expected to be scrupulously above board and to ensure that there is no real or perceived conflict between their official duties and private interests. The code and rules set out the principles to be applied. The code of conduct and the rules of prudence also give examples to illustrate the application of the guidelines. But these examples are not exhaustive. In fact, the Code says so. The examples are not exhaustive. As it is not possible to lay out specific rules governing behaviour for every single situation. For the public service, the Code of Conduct is set out in the Instruction Manual, or the IM. All public officers must take an annual code of conduct quiz and make the necessary declarations, such as being free of financial embarrassment, their investments in non-owner occupied properties, and their investments in private firms. They are also required to make ad hoc declarations of purchases of private residential properties, commercial properties, and land. The principles laid out in the codes of conduct adequately cover any potential conflict of interest that could have arisen, including in this case. Both the ministers and the public officers, as well as the private sector intermediaries involved, conducted themselves properly in the two rental transactions. They are aware of their duty to declare and avoid any conflict of interest, and they took appropriate steps to prevent any potential or actual conflict of interest from arising. Mr Deputy Speaker, it is more important to observe the spirit rather than the letter of the codes. Nevertheless, the public service will re reference this case as an additional example to reinforce the importance for public officers to act with integrity. In addition, the Public Service Division will work with relevant, relevant ministries and statutory boards such as HDB, JTC, NEA and SLA to introduce a standard declaration requirement for selected groups of officers who have access to or are involved in leasing and valuation matters. Officers in these organisations who have access to privileged information and or can influence the outcomes of decisions will have to make a declaration before they can rent government properties managed by their agencies. The officer will have to declare that he has taken adequate steps to prevent any conflict of interest from arising, for example, by recusing himself from overseeing or processing the transaction. These properties will include commercial and residential state properties such as black and white bungalows, terraces, factory office spaces, business parks, shops and neighbourhood centres, hawker and market stalls. The Prime Minister will also review the declarations required for property transactions for ministers and PAP members of Parliament.